Hello my soccer universe! Finally we are reviewing last weekend's action of La Liga, Liga Nosh and since we had yesterday a round of Liga uh, and a makeup game between Bilbao and Barcelona I decided to wait until today until I make my recap. It seemed like a na natural point to make it this way and not uh, have uh, two videos and so on. I think we get a nicer uh, way of dealing with things this way. Uh, that was not a good sentence. Whatever. It's raw, it's real. Uh, also, I, if you were thinking that the next video will be about the Milan Juve clash and now you're disappointed, it's not because Milan lost, it's just I wanted to, La Liga was overdue. You will get my Juve Milan thoughts relatively soon. So, um, either in the evening or tomorrow morning, European time. I'm wearing Barcelona. I was a little bit going back and forth, but uh, one of the headlines is that Barcelona actually won twice, at least for the second time. They looked actually quite entertaining doing so. I'm not saying Barcelona is back in any way, but look entertaining doing so. So why not pull out an away jersey since we have the other one hanging up there. Um, other headlines is clearly that Atletico Madrid has found a resilience in them that is kind of staggering. Uh, getting, I would say, a victory that might carry them for a little bit longer in underlining their status as current title favorites. Um, if we go to France, um, yeah, uh, baby steps for uh, Poch and um, PSG. They just started. It's still a little bit stuttering. Let's see where this is going, especially if you have no Neymar in the lineup yet. And in Portugal, Sporting with a rather big victory, also underlining the status that, you know, we might challenge the big two of the last few seasons. I would say let's hop to the games. Um, we start out with Villarreal getting a 2-1 win over Levante. Um, then the Seville derby, I saw the second half, where fortunately the game sprung to life, conveniently so. Uh, Suso finding, uh, giving Sevilla uh, the lead in the 48th minute, but then uh, Sevilla conceded a penalty through Canales in the 53rd. In what followed, I thought that Sevilla was largely the better, more composed team, but uh, Betis always get a little bit threatening um, on the counter-attack, and then Fekir, really uh, made a nice move, was brought down in the box. And for some reason, Canales, who just took a penalty, did not take the penalty and Fekir takes the penalty. The penalty is saved and uh, even the rebound was not going anywhere. That's, and uh, because of that, everyone, the headline is, yeah, Betis probably should have won this match. I'm not so sure. I thought that Sevilla was better. Also, uh, from what I hear, the explanation of why Fekir was taking the penalty and not Canales was a rather a lame one. Basically, Canales was supposed to only play one half and he was tired and did not take it. Whatever. Uh, it ends 1-1 one, one in a game that definitely is better with fans, we all know that. Well, I believe a surprising win over Getafe and we see that Getafe is in trouble at the moment. Um, Real Madrid, honestly, that was not a bad performance against Celta Vigo. I made a point of watching uh, most of that game. I know there were other games in the Bundesliga as well. But I have to say, I expect it's a little bit more from Vigo, but Real Madrid had them quite under control and even more importantly, uh, it was not Benzema, Modric and Kroos or whatever, it is Asensio and Lucas combining for both goals. So that uh, really must shows a little bit the squad depth for Real Madrid. So um, rather convincing win, uh, they are staying in the title race. Athletic Club beats Elche 1-0, coach anyway gets sacked. <laughs> But uh, Garitano, I think he had it coming and was replaced by Marcelino Mourning him a little bit later. And then we come to the whole this uh, match. Vinuesca, uh, no, uh, Alaves and Atletico, where, um, you know, a typical Atletico performance in uh, many ways that um, not uh, all, all great, but efficient, staying uh, um, so, 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 so back. And then uh, late in the first half, they get the goal through Marcos Llorente, which was uh, deflected. And when La Guardia gets a um, rather tough red card, I have to say, uh, for tripping, it all seems to be set nicely for Atletico that they can play this home 
but um, unfortunately after a shot from the outside of box Felipe deflects the ball into his own net and it's 1-1 in the 84th minute and you're thinking who Alaves they, they are prone to spring surprises I mean they have beaten Real Madrid last last season I think they did they beat Bar Barcelona at least they got, got, got a draw against Barcelona but I don't know now so you think ah this is another really really tricky time and then Joao Felice finds Suarez in the 90th and Atletico uh, escapes with a win from there. And I have to say this was kind of the one hope where everyone kind of was hoping for, yeah, uh, at least if you're in the chasing pack, uh, maybe get a title race, maybe Atletico Madrid is not that far ahead and now they pull out this win. And that must be demoralizing and also lifting the spirits of Atletico Madrid. Not, we would have expected them to, um, to win, but I think uh, this is a win that can really carry them for a little bit. Uh, Eva Granada to nil Rassus, that only one one against Osasuna. Uh, Barcelona toys with Huesca, uh, but doesn't really get many, uh, you know, doesn't get many goals. I mean, um, Frankie de Jong, uh, it was actually nicely assisted by Messi. He gets the goal. Barcelona probably should have made more. They were missing more chances. And yeah, Huesca is a much better team than anyone would say. And then another team that has been good recently, but currently is in absolute trouble, is Valencia. We will see where they are in the standings. They only manage a 1-1 at home to Cadiz. Cadiz. Uh, Lozano actually giving uh, the Andalusians the, the lead, and I think they hit the uh, bar, and then Maxi Gomez late gets the equalizer for Valencia. It's not a pretty picture for, Valen uh, for Valencia. I am actually thinking they are in some danger of getting relegated this season. The, their squad does not look right, but lots of games to be played. And then we had uh, yesterday evening, Wednesday evening, a makeup game from round uh, two. Uh, the one, th uh, the other two, I think, have not. They, I have not found a date yet. Uh, the Levante, Atletico, and Sevilla Elche games. Um, I think largely depends on Champions League, and you know, there's a super cup. In Whatever. Bilbao actually gets the early lead uh, through um, uh, Williams and Marcelino is set to upset Barcelona one more time. The last time he coached was in the cup final uh, in 2019 when Valencia beat Barcelona 1-0. Uh, and I actually think that Marcelino could do quite well for Bilbao. I think he's definitely a great coach uh, within the Spanish league, uh, showing that you can a little bit, uh, at least anger the top players out there, uh, the top clubs out there. So um, that's all fine. But then actually, it has to be said, Barcelona really showed us something and they get the equalizer through Pedri in the 14th and then a wonderfully played goal uh, how Pedri assists uh, Messi with the back and back can, uh, and uh, Messi can pull it in from uh, far far out to make it 2-1 that was really 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 nice um, and then the second Messi goal in the 62nd where Griezmann uh, plays for once a really good pass to Messi you could see Messi was happy, looked happy uh, to celebrate with his team. It, it looked fluent again. However, Messi also assisted the last goal, which was not uh, a Barcelona goal, but an Athletic Bilbao goal, where he really played a horrible pass uh, that uh, Berenguer uh, in, in the safe place to Munoin, who in the 90th makes it 2 3. But Barcelona get a win, looking at least going forward all right. The early goal, we have to see where this leads us. And where this leads us now in the standings is that Atletico Madrid with two games less have two points, uh, a two-point lead ahead of Real Madrid. You can see they are clear favorites to win the championship. Barcelona moving up to third. So uh, this is something we have not seen in a, in a while. I think that this is the highest placing so far. Yes, they have games in hand. So um, it, that's why we have not seen them so high, but it's still rather interesting. So it seems like the top three at this moment are also set to um, go into the champ. Champions League with Atletico Madrid has said huge favorites to win uh, the league. Barcelona actually giving them a little bit of boost in the chance for the championship, which no other team at this moment is given a chance by my model. Um, for the last Champions League spot, it's a three-way race between Real Sociedad, Villarreal and Sevilla. That's why. I'm saying I need Rasa uh, Danvier Real jerseys to kind of fill this out up top uh, with Sevilla giving the advantage for now. Look at Valencia. 
I am 17th at the moment with a 34% chance of being relegated. Still, Elche, uh, they have a few games in hand, so uh, I will adjust late, later. They will move up. Elche is still uh, together with Uesca, the teams that uh, are also want to be really relegated. Also, Osasuna doesn't look good, but then Valencia is already the next one in line. That's scary for su uh, such a huge team as Valencia. So let's do the adjustment and we actually, actually see that Valencia actually drops down even here. Uh, and Elche, as expected, uh, moves up with two, two, two games in hand there. At the moment, their record uh, says they are in the 4 or 14th. The top three stay the same, but you can already see on the bars all the way to the right. And I have done it for Serie I've done it for the Premier League, and I'm doing here for uh, La Liga as, as well. You see all uh, who is currently overperforming and underperforming. We see Barbers are still with the red bar. Athletic Madrid, very good performance. But the ones that are really overperforming at the moment are Granada and Elche for sure. Uh, the worst performers, Huesca uh, and Getafe. Getafe, another team that's rather deep down there. Now, for the upcoming schedule, and again, I will do the La Liga review a little bit later. It will probably come uh, Wednesday uh, or even Thursday, probably, probably Wednesday, because first we have a full round that, run, round that runs from Friday through Monday with two, uh, at least two pretty interesting ones. There's Sevilla against Real Sociedad on Saturday. Uh, at two o'clock, we have also Atletico uh, against Athletic Club, I think. That is a very, very interesting match in Athletic Club. Yeah, that's a pretty tough uh, start for Marcelino uh, there. Uh, Barcelona at Granada, upset potential. I don't think we have that for Osasuna against Real Madrid. Uh, Valladolid, Valencia, huge game uh, being uh, down there. And Celta via Real, maybe could go. Can Celta maybe push for European spots or not? I think that's also an interesting game of Friday. But there is more. We have on Tuesday a makeup game between Granada and Osasuna, so the uh, table will level out a little bit more. And then also on Tuesday late, another big matchup. Athletic Madrid is being hit with big match matchups at the moment against Sevilla at home at 9.30. That is an absolute uh, scorcher. So uh, that will also show us a little bit what Atletico Madrid is made with also even out the table a little bit more. The league earn round yesterday, I only saw the highlights of the top three teams. Lille, a rather disappointing loss to Angers, who very early on, I think with the first 10 minutes to Thomas, uh, gets two goals. Yilmaz can only pull one back before the half, but it was always more Angers that was um, threatening. Lyon, it looks tight, but they had a rather comfortable 3 0 lead. Yes, it was never as um, clear as it looked like, but Depay, after Paqueta, um, assist gives Lyon the lead just before the half and after the half the unfortunately the last goalie uh, implodes uh, forcing Fortes into an own goal and then giving away a penalty against Depay in the 52nd. However Lars responds well and they uh, pull four minutes after 3-0 pull one goal back and late they get even a second one um, it was in the 89th minute so two through two curry so um, Never give giving up at Lyon, get, getting a win, and it's an important win because PSG only manages a draw at Saint Etienne. Uh, um, Saint Etienne being a little bit better in the first half, Amumar giving them a lead, but Moise can, can a little bit later equalize. Then PSG has chances, but they never find their way uh, into the goal. Also playing in those uh, weird third jerseys. And so, yeah, the start is so and so. Other notable results is that the Breton Tabe between um, Nantes and Rennes ends in a goalless draw. Monaco's 5 2 uh, at Lorient looks impressive. Uh, same thing goes for Strasbourg, who may be finding um, getting a little bit of a roll in Marseille, beating Montpellier 3 1 is also, I think, a rather big result. Which um, in the standings now, See Lyon a little bit taking off PSG. This is a three point difference or, or, or already. Uh, and PSG being at the lowest point of giving the chances for the championship. Lyon having a substantial chance now. We'll see how close they are in the projected average uh, points uh, in the season. Uh, Lille, of course, having now lost only an outside chance, but uh, not everything else. Marseille is also giving some chance. Again, the table is rather uneven. I just want to point out uh, for chances, Nîmes looks in grave danger and Lorient and Dijon pro probably 
they have to decide who goes into relegation. Uh, Nantes is threatened. Nantes is definitely threatened at the moment. And I don't think that Raymond Bond or Dominic will do something about that much. Um, if we see it, the adjust is we see Marseille moving actually into fourth spot. And I also want to point out now the um, projected points. So if the points average per game remains the same. Lyon would, uh, would finish on 82 and PSG on 76 points. However, you also have to see the expected ones. PSG has a, at the moment only a two-point advantage in um, the average uh, finished league in my sim 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 simulation. So Lyon really could push them this season. We have to see. Uh, all the bars, you see the red bar at PSG doesn't show uh, much. Angers is one of the positive uh, surprises, as is Brest. For the negative ones, it is Strasbourg, who actually have a quite a good rating, and Lorient, who also were expected to perform a whole lot better. Uh, the next round, I think there is a Rennes Lyon matchup that is enticing. Lille plays at Nîmes, should get a win. Paris, uh, Paris Saint Germain should get a win against uh, Brest. And uh, Dijon Marseille also. I think there's not this huge matchup in there except for Rennes Lyon, uh, where probably the competitors will hope that uh, Lyon will drop points. Let's go to Portugal, where also a little bit happened. Uh, first of all, Sporting, although going a goal down in the 46 through Paulinho, but it's a call off for offside. And this was one of the offsides that was in the build-up. So uh, that hit Braga hard. And then in the 54th, Pedro Gonzalez gives Sporting the lead. And they can even um, um, double the lead through Mateusz in the 78th, giving uh, Sporting a rather impressive win. And it gets even more impressive because Benfica only manages a 1-1 in Santa Clara. Porto against Morange, 3-0. That was... Uh, Probably to be expected, one is tempted to say. So all that means now in the table is the Sporting remain top uh, and still unbeaten and having a rather good um, um, re record with 10 wins and only two draws. Porto overtaking Benfica and are now the favorites to win the league with Sporting already going ahead of Benfica in the standings there. Braga is only giving us a chance in making it in the Champions League and or uh, winning the championship. So yeah. Uh, Portugal also looking interesting. Um, really waiting for um, look, look looking forward to a big tie. Uh, we don't need to adjust much, but just to see the performances uh, here with uh, projected versus expected. Sporting is the positive uh, surprise in the Port Portuguese league, and uh, we, for the negative ones, we have to look on the bottom. Uh, I am a little bit surprised if Fan Family Car after such, such a good showing is down there. Also, Rio Ave, that's a team that almost eliminated Milan from the Europa League, is currently on the bottom of the table. Um, Let's see the next matchups. We don't have yet the, any of the big ones. Nacional against Sporting, uh, Benfica against Tondela, and Family Car against Porto, Braga against Maritimo. I think it's all still. We are waiting for a Porto Benfica matchup or the Lisbon derby. They're coming soon. So that's it for Western Europe. Tons of snow outside, so I'm rather happy that we're talking about warmer climates at the moment, although it's raining there. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.